Hello everyone, my name is Sumit and I welcome all of you to BISP self-learning video broadcast solution. Today I am going to discuss about a topic in Windows Azure that is table storage in Windows Azure. So first let's talk about the storage, various type of storage available in Windows Azure. So we have got blob, tables and queues. So blobs are basically used to store the large or unstructured data like audios, videos, images, pictures, etc. that can be uploaded online and that can be shared by using a web application to our users. Tables, it's a simply structured data which can be accessed by using ADO.NET services and we have queues. Uh, in queues we can store serially access messages or, or request and this allowing verb roles and worker roles to interact with the queues or the messages which are stored in queues. So let me more elaborate storage here. So we have tables, blob and queue storage capabilities. In the Windows storage, Windows Azure storage, whether it's a table, blob or queue, the data can be fault tolerant, highly available and highly scalable. It means data will be easily accessible and easily available. And the goal is to having a data close to application so that it can be accessed by with the application quickly. And the main involvement or the main to create in Windows Azure we have we are, uh, we'll be going to use the partitions are the key concept for the scalability. So the data we are going to store in tables or in the blob or queues we are going to use the partition keys. So let's talk about the table storage in Azure. So basically what are table storage? So Windows Azure tables are a non-relational key value pair storage system suitable for storing massive amount of unstructured data. So by using Windows Azure, it's a flexible and a key value store. Uh, by using this, we can store a large amount of data. And for this, we don't have to lock down the application data model to a particular set of schemas. And it is not a relational data store. And it does not provide the same relational data management function as Azure SQL database does, like the joining, such as join and store procedures and all. It can be used for application that must store large amount of non-relational non data and need additional structure for that data. And Azure table storage store a structured data without schemas. It does not provide any way to represent relationship between the data. So there will be no relationship between the data. And if we want to store a large amount of data, if we want to store huge, huge amount of data, so we can have, uh, we can store the data in Azure's table storage. And additionally, we can have different rows within the same table that have different structure that is not possible with SQL, Azure SQL. But in table storage in Azure, we can store the data, same data means we can have the different rows with different with the, within the same table and that can have different structure. So this, that's the use of table storage in Azure. And let's take an example here. So there's an example, it's a structure example. So first of all, we'll be going to create an account here. So that's our storage account. And in, in this storage account, we have got the table, like two tables. We have got two, two separate tables and two in within two separate tables, we have got entities and in entities, we have got columns. So we are going to create the same, same kind of a structure or we can have the same kind of a structure in table storage. So First of all, we'll see how to create a table storage, how to create a storage in Azure, how to create a table storage programmatically and how to save the data into that store table storage programmatically. So let's see this. So first of all, I'm going to create a new storage account or new storage in my Azure. So first of all, we need to create a new storage in Azure. So I click on storage and click on new to create to create a new storage account. So I click on quick create and I write BISP, BISP new storage. Account. Account. Okay, already contain lowercase letters, so BISP new storage account. It's available and I would like to, its location will be East Asia. Replication will be, I'll go with the default one that is a geo -redudent. It means it will check the redudent or the duplicate records in the whole geographical region. 
and I click on create storage account. So this will create a new storage account for us. And now by using Visual Studio, we'll be going to create a new storage if within this storage account or within this Azure storage, we'll be going to create a new table with one entity and with one record into that. So let's see how to do that. So I'll open Visual Studio Express here and click on new project and this will this will be my web project so I'll go I'll select ASP.NET empty web application and that's the name and the location of your project and click on OK and you can see it's creating right now so it may take time it, de it may depends on your speed and obviously it will take time to create a new storage account on Azure So here the account has been, uh, the Visual Studio, the project has been created now and at the same time we have the storage also has been created here and now within this storage account I will be going to create a new table storage. So let's see how to create the table storage. So to create the table storage I need to create one page here so that whenever I load that page the table will be created into storage account. So before Moving on to that, we would like to set up a connection between Azure and this web application. So how to do that? Right click on this web application and click on manage NuGet packages. And here I write Azure storage. I look for Azure storage and click on install. You will get a list here so you need to click on install and it will start downloading and installing of Windows Azure onto your web application and it will add references here. So right now we have got no references for Azure storage so once it will download and install the references will be added into our application into this current application. So you can see the references has been added here and we need to check one more storage client as well Azure storage client. So I look for this Azure storage client and install it as well. So once it is done I close it. Next I'm going to add one default application. So right click add and web form. Web form name is web form and the web form will add here. And in this web form, I want to set this web form as my home page whenever I publish this application, publish this web application on Windows Azure, I, will, I want this web form to be the home page. So I double click on web config and I add a code here that is the system dot web server and default document files and I write here clear. Clear means it will clear all the exist if any application if any form or ESPX file has been set as a home page previously so it will clear all the uh, it will clear from the web server and then it will make the current web form as a home page. So right here clear and I give add value is equal to web form one dot AS and close it. Save it. It's done and in this I write a simple message table or data table. Okay. Now let's on this web form I expand it and uh, okay and double click on this so it will load this CS file. Here I write using I add the libraries using Microsoft dot Windows Azure dot storage and I copy paste this because I'm going to use it again storage dot authentication for the authentication to create authentication 
and for table because we are going to create table here so storage dot table on page load I create two variables string account name and string account key that is for the authentication or for the setting up a connection between the Windows Azure and our storage account now how to get the account key and account name and account key so to get the account name and account key of our storage account is I'll select this account I'll select this account I would like to create table within this storage account so I select it and if you'll see at the bottom there is an option manage access key so I clicked on manage access key and it will load the storage account name in the primary key so I copy this so that will be my account name and the key copy this and this will be the key this will be the key so that's the account name and account key and now we'll be going to write code to use this so let me write. so you can see here that's the code and in this code uh, first of all I have created a credential I set the credentials account name and account key then we created a new storage account and this storage account will bind with this account name and account key and I set it to HTTPS true so that it can be accessed through online through HTTPS protocol then I set up a new client it will create a new cloud table client and in this table client I set th that will be the name this will be the name of table within the account or within the storage within this storage account here storage so this will be the name of the table sporting products and there is a statement here table dot create if not exist so if this table does not ex exist it will create it and after that you can see we have got a new entity here class entity so I'm going to create a new class entity here so I create a new class here new class one and here on this new entity I'll set here using Microsoft dot Windows Azure dot storage dot table and this will extend the table entity and within this table entity first of all I create a constructor public class one and string category comma string that's the key and base bracket category comma SKU and now the it's a blank one so again I create one more default constructor public class one that's the default constructor with no code part coding into this then I create two variables here public string product name get and set public string description get and set so I'll save this and if I'll get back you can see here the error has been gone so that's the entity in this entity I pass the so this is the key that's the key so that's the primary key and that's the value of it primary key so you can see here, that's the key set. so as I told you that the table storage it's it basically its key uh, it, it has it reference the data by using its key and the value so that's the key and that's the value so that will so a combination of key and value will use to uh, it is used to uh, for its reference for as it, it work as a primary key okay. so this will this will be like a primary key for this particular record and in this I set the product name as Lewis Slugler and description as a great great bat for all any level of player and then I insert this entity into the table so first of all we have this will create a table and this will insert the entity or this particular entity into this table so this will create one record so once we save this we have we have to execute it so I'm right click and publish it and uh, we need to look for the published website where we would like to publish it so I select the web app web the webs so we have got 
two webs here, two web apps. So you can see here we have web app, two web apps. So I'm going to use the web app here. Any of them, any of them can be used to publish it. So I go with the BISP solution software new. Click on OK. It will download the publish setting. Click on publish, and it will publish it. So once it is published successfully, I'll got a message here. Table created. This was my default message, which I have try to display on this web form one table created it means that form has been loaded successfully and on the form load event this code has been executed and according to this code a table should have uh, table must have been created within this storage which we have created in windows azure so let's go and check whether the table has been created with as a name with the sporting product and with this one entity whose key and value will be baseball and the value is b1 B1011 and these are the product name and description these are the entity so let's go and check this so how to test it so there are various products available online or various applications available online for which we can download it but we have an inbuilt feature within Visual Studio so for this I clicked on view and I click on data explorer in this data explorer you can see I'm getting this Azure you will only get this once you download and install Windows Azure SDK on your system so you have to download Windows Azure SDK before this so as you can see here I expand it and in storage I've got a new storage here BISP new storage account this that was our storage account BISP new storage account and if I'll expand it BISP storage account there's a table and if you see table we have got sporting products table so that's the name of this table and in this table there would be one entity with the key and value will be this and the product name and description will be this so let's right click on this and view table so you can see here we have a partition key with baseball the key is this and we have a product name is this and description is this so like this we can add more than one entities in the batch form or we can have more than one we can create an entity from here as well we can add an entity from here as well we have we have an option here add an entity or we had an option for deleting entity we can customize it from we have query builder as well so that's the way how we can create a table storage and how to create a new table within that storage account of Windows Azure and how to create entity objects and how to create the columns and insert the value. So that's all in this video. If you have any queries you can or questions you, you can visit our website www.bisptrainings.com or bispsolutions.com. You can subscribe our YouTube channel for more videos. Have a nice day ahead. Goodbye.